After Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's is the second most common neurodegenerative disorder in the United States. It's a diagnosis nearly 90,000 Americans get every year. But as Ali Rogan tells us, it exhibits its symptoms differently in women than in men. Parkinson's disease damages or kills nerves in the brain, causing muscle stiffness, tremors, and other symptoms that worsen over time. And while it's more common in men than women, women are more often misdiagnosed or diagnosed late. And sometimes women experience symptoms and respond to treatment differently than men. Joining me to discuss is Sonia Mather, a Parkinson's disease advocate and family physician. Dr. Mather, thank you so much for joining us. As you've described it, to me, Parkinson's disease is really uh, more of a spectrum of neurodegenerative disorders more than any one ailment. So with the understanding that it's not a monolith, can you describe what some of the most common symptoms of Parkinson's disease are? Parkinson's disease is um, the second most common neurological disease uh, behind dementia, but it's the fastest growing of the neurological illnesses. And it, as you mentioned, is neurodegenerative, progressive, relentless, without a cure. And the symptoms can sort of be divided into two groups. The motor symptoms, those are things like tremor and um, slowness of movement and stiffness and falls. Non-motor symptoms can be anything from head to toe, including hair and skin changes, um, fatigue, sleep issues, uh, constipation, a variety of symptoms. How is it that men and women experience these symptoms differently? Women are more tremor dominant. We have more facial masking and more restless leg syndrome. Um, when it comes to non-motor symptoms, we tend to suffer more from mood issues such as anxiety and depression and sleep disturbances compared to our male counterparts. We also experience more fatigue pain and urogenital symptoms such as urinary dysfunction and incontinence. And what's even more is that we know that the severity and impact of these symptoms varies according to the hormonal status of the woman, for example, throughout her menstrual cycle or with menopause, for example. We believe that the longer that you're exposed to estrogen through your life, that that may help to prevent or to protect you from getting something like Parkinson's disease. But we just don't have the answers. Historically, most research participants were white, older gentlemen. So a lot of our treatment guidelines that came from that research were based on a, a result of a small set of population that's actually affected by this disease because the stereotype has, is still there today that it affects white, older gentlemen as opposed to the fact that this disease really knows no boundaries in terms of age, gender, race, geographical borders. And you yourself were diagnosed with what's known as young onset Parkinson's at age 28. What was that experience like for you getting diagnosed? And how did you uh, come to understand that that's what you had? I basically noticed an intermittent tremor in my right pinky finger. And I just completed my residency in family medicine, was expecting my first daughter. And my husband, who's also a physician, said I had better go get it checked out. And instead of getting the news that I had hoped, I was instead diagnosed with young onset Parkinson's disease at the age of 28. And that was almost 24 years ago. And the disease continued to progress, so much so that I had to actually stop my clinical medical practice, unfortunately. And instead, I've devoted my life towards advocacy, education, and research in Parkinson's disease. The impact of this disease is really extremely disabling. It affects you not only physically, but mentally, socially, emotionally, and relationships get affected. And it's pretty unpredictable in terms of its disability. Mm. Your symptoms and response to medication can really vary day by day, hour to hour, and that's sort of what I'm experiencing now as well. And speaking of that unpredictability, are there any symptoms, any changes that women should look out for if they think potentially they may be experiencing Parkinson's disease symptoms? The issue with young onset Parkinson's disease in general, and women in particular, is that we often present with nonspecific symptoms. Mine was a little bit unusual in that I had the tremor right away. A lot of women will, or, or men for that matter, in young onset Parkinson's will present with, you know, shoulder pain or uh, a slowness of movement, not swinging their arm, loss of smell, constipation, depression, what we call REM sleep behavior disorder, which is acting out your dreams and moving during sleep. And the other problem with diagnosing um, women or, or men in this younger age is the fact that not only are the symptoms nonspecific, but the physicians also are not of the mindset that this happens in younger people. They're still on the lookout for it in older people, and particularly men. And to that point, are there any advancements in the study of this that give you hope? It's definitely improving. Researchers are much more aware of the need to include underrepresented populations in general in their work.
We need to do research that are inclusive of women and our unique genetics, our unique um, hormonal status. The research that is out there currently is lacking in, the, in these areas. For example, I mentioned that we think that there may be a neuroprotective role for estrogen. But when it comes to the timing of estrogen exposure, when is it best to start something like hormonal replacement therapy? What type of hormonal replacement therapy and for how long? What about oral contraceptive pills? We know that women report that their Parkinson's symptoms tend to get worse just prior to menstruation, sometimes during it as well. What is the best way to manage those fluctuations? That's something we don't know yet. How does pregnancy affect the trajectory or progression of your Parkinson's or does it? There's so many unanswered questions that affect women uniquely. And um, I, I wanna always stress that this, this type of research is not only just important for women, but can benefit the whole Parkinson's community because it increases our general understanding or knowledge of this disease, which will benefit everybody. It's really a win-win situation that way. Dr. Sonia Mother, family physician and Parkinson's disease advocate, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.